Hi everyone, Nicole Russo in Kentucky and Dan Ilman in New York coming to you with this week's edition of the Oaks Countdown. We'll begin as we usually do by taking a look at the current point standings toward a spot in the September 4th Kentucky Oaks and viewers will immediately notice some new names on that list after last weekend's Fairgrounds Oaks, which offered hefty point values, including 100 to the winner, Bonnie South, now atop the list. You're absolutely right, Nicole. Bonnie South gave a career-making performance in the Fairgrounds Oaks last week, upsetting the divisional leader, Finite, who was surprisingly flat as the heavy favorite. Bonnie South by Munnings, and as you can see by the list, Munnings with the top two point leaders for the Kentucky Oaks. He's been a standout sire in 2020. He's, you know, he's already proven himself an outstanding Philly sire with the likes of I'm a Chatterbox, who was third in the Kentucky Oaks a few years ago, just having an outstanding year with his three-year-olds. He also has Venetian Harbor, who's just outside of that top 14. Uh, really an outstanding year for him. Here's the finish of the Fairgrounds Oaks. Bonnie South came on to win as Finite faded to finish fourth after making the lead an upper stretch. Both of those fillies, as you mentioned, by Munnings, both are out of Tappet mares, so bred on the same cross. Let's talk about Finite for a second. Now, in prior years, this would be an awful time for a hiccup, you know, just a few weeks out from the Oaks, but now she'll have the time to kind of bounce back from it, hopefully. And Dan, what do you think happened with Finite on this day? I'm just assuming she had a bad day. It happens to even the best. We've seen it many, many times in the past. You're absolutely right, however. If this was to be a normal year, and it is far from a normal year, as everyone knows, and the Kentucky Oaks was going to be con uh, contested on the first Friday in May, this would be a disastrous effort from Finite. With the exception of Serengeti Empress last year, you rarely have a horse preparing for a major race like the Derby or the Oaks throw in an absolute clunker in the final prep, and then come back to win a major race like that. With the Kentucky Oaks now in September, Steve Asmussen has time to regroup with Finite, and I think that's very, very important. She's done a lot of racing. Maybe she bounced after a couple of hard races. Expect her to get a break. But if Finite returns in the summer in the same form that what we saw from her over the winter and into the spring, she is still a very strong and dangerous Oaks threat. Absolutely. And, you know, in the meantime, Bonnie South, a very promising filly who looks like she's headed in the right direction. And we'll see if she can keep that trajectory going all the way through the summer and into the fall here. Uh, as I mentioned, actually brought on the same cross as Finite. She traces directly back to champion Chris Ever. And this has been a very productive family for owner breeder John Mond. It's the family of good fillies like Sightseek. Tate's Creek, European st champion special duty and others. Now, Bobby South out of roll. She's now won three straight for Judd Ma and Brad Cox. She preceded the Fairgrounds Oaks with this nice allowance win at Oaklawn. And it actually came two days before the same connections uh, tragically lost the unbeaten Philly Taraz to a training accident. The barn is just loaded in this division. Absolutely right. And this is a nice scalp that she took down at Oaklawn and she dares the devil, who, of course, came back to pull off a very nice prep win at Oaklawn Park. She got a wonderful pace scenario in this race. But I think she showed in the Fairgrounds Oaks that if you at least give her a fair pace scenario, she is going to come running. She doesn't have a lot of early speed. She is a one run closer. But you named all of the classy names in that family. And not only does this family boast a lot of class, but distance, and that's going to be very, very important for Bonnie South as she continues preparing for the Oaks. And as we continue preparing for the Oaks, we've got a couple of those traditional prep races coming up as we'll take a look. Uh, the Gulfstream Park Oaks, the Santa Anita Oaks, both of those off offer hefty point values as well. We're gonna expect to see a big field in the Gulfstream Oaks to be drawn later today. Tonalist shape, spice is nice, and others. It could get some fillies who were intended for the now uh, canceled Ashland at Keeneland. The Santa Anita Oaks coming up the following week, kind of in the same boat as we now expect to see Venetian Harbor there. Again, she was intended for the Ashland. 
now staying home for this race while she has the opportunity to run. Uh, I expect these to be very competitive races. Especially the Gulfstream Park Oaks, Nicole. You mentioned the two big names in South Florida, Tonalist Shape and Spice is Nice, but you'll also be seeing Lucrezia, who's just been the scourge of the division at Tampa Bay Downs, winning her last two races. Now, she, one of the horses that was going to go to the Ashland. So this is Plan B. Never easy to win with Plan B, but Lucrezia might be a little bit of a price play. And the Santa Anita Oaks, you mentioned Venetian Harbor. She has shown some rare talent. She's going to be taking a big step up in class. I think the strength of the division right now is in Southern California. You have Venetian Harbor. You have Donna Velosi. Well, and, you know, next week we'll get a chance to take a closer look at what happened in the Gulfstream Park Oaks and look ahead to the Santa Anita Oaks. As we said, both of those look like really competitive, strong, interesting races on this unique road to this year's Kentucky Oaks. We'll bring you all the latest right here next week on DRF TV.